Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Taylor Farbs YouTube channel. Uh, today in the shop we got a project on the go. Uh, there's a little bit of snow outside still so we're going to stick to some shop projects. I've always wanted to build a hitch for my Peterbilt uh, grain truck so that I could haul equipment around with it or if you wanted to pull a trailer or whatever you wanted. So I think I got some material out in a shed in the back, we'll go dig that out um, for the sides of the hitch and then I got some receiver tubing in the shop here and some other big tubing and uh, we'll construct something today and get that built, welded up and built and uh, we'll use that and get it all painted up and then bolt that into the semi truck in the next couple days. Um, the section of the frame that I want to bolt it into has been stretched on the backside for the box so it's not the same as the truck frame rail so it should drill easy and it would be weldable because it's not actually truck frame material so let's get this tractor fired up now let's get it outside and we'll load that material up out of that shed out back haul it in here and kind of get designing and chop it up on the bandsaw and get welding I pulled that piece of 8 inch C-channel out of the shed, got it in the shop here, set it up on a couple stands, just looking at what kind of design I want. I went and measured the truck itself and now I've got this piece of metal in the shop here and I've been drawing on it with the Markall pencil and then I've kind of went out and measured the hitch on my truck and based it kind of off that and then the same height as like a drawbar and a tractor. So if you were to move farm equipment with this truck you have the same height as like a drawbar so that it would pull level. I also checked on the truck to see kind of what the lowest hanging area was and where I'm going to have the the uh, hitch stop. The differentials are actually quite a bit lower than that. So I got this design here I'll show you guys. We're going to mark it all out and then cut it all up. So this line here is where the frame of the truck ends on the top side. The frame is about this long, so this will be the bottom of the frame here on the truck. Um, so this will drop down flush from the top of the frame. It's going to drop down, and this center of this will actually be about 18 and a half inches or so. I've got these two pieces of C-channel. That's going to make the sides, and then I plan on using 4x4x4 four by four by quarter tubing between the two sides, and then I'm going to actually cut this out with the torch so that the piece of tubing will go right through and then I'm going to weld it on this outer edge here and that way it's not pulling just on your weld it's actually pulling on this bit of material between here and here as well and then I'm going to have your two inch receiver tubing come in it'll stick out the same distance as it does on a pickup and then I'll have it cut through this piece of square tubing here as well and out the back side so there's room to weld on both sides of that this will make it plenty strong as it is, but I plan to use another piece of this C-channel and from here to here is 8 inches. And if I have a piece of the C-channel laying flat across the front as well, I think that will make it look really good. We'll have a nice flat face, we'll have flat sides and I think it will just look really smooth and natural on the back of the truck. Just got a little tiny nub we got to take down with the die grinder right there. That's how this tube's going to fit through. I cut the corners with the torch so they're a little, little wider than they should be. But they're pretty good. That's not too big of a gap. Just this one here that I got to fill. But I got this area here to weld across. And then this tube will actually be right through this piece of C-channel. And that'll make it a lot better and stronger because it's not just relying on welds. If you were to weld it on the back side here. So this is going to be way, way, way stronger and that's built the way that the hitch receiver in my truck's actually built. So I get 
get the feeling that's the way they do it from the fact. We just got those pieces all cut out for that hitch. We got the four inch, uh, quarter inch thick tubing. Um, we've torched a hole through both sides of that. And then this is the front face plate that's gonna go from both sides, across both sides from side to side here. Um, and then it'll also have the receiver tubing sticking out past here. I'll pick up a couple of those weld on D-ring eyelets here. Um, weld those on each side. We coped all these pieces in here as well as here and here on the top of that one. Um, so that should all be easily ground down tomorrow, shined up, get all that rust and mill scale off there. And then we'll go ahead and weld that up. I had to take a break from building that hitch here today. We got some grain to move. We got some barley we're hauling to the local elevator. Uh, I rented some bins here last year. They were in, in pretty rough shape. I had to get them all fixed up. So uh, we got to cut this door open. I just kind of got it tire wired shut because of the hinges and everything was rolled off and the cows were pushing on it. Uh, we'll get the auger in the bin, haul load. I already got preloaded to the elevator and we'll come back and start loading out a couple bins here. We got a few bin bottoms to do and we've got a quite a few loads to haul with the tandem. So hold on and we'll go for a ride. Just got back to the farm here. Truck's been plugged in for a while now. It's warm out, but I still like to give it that little extra because it's still, you know, plus three or four outside. I like to give it that extra little time with the block heater to let the block warm up a little bit. We're gonna check the oil on it, check the coolant level, um, fire it up, warm it up, and head to the elevator.
So we're at the elevator here, we're just getting probed. I don't know if you can see through the window. Uh, we got about a half load on the truck for the first load hauled because um, this load is actually screenings from seed that got cleaned. So this is the fine seeds, the chaff, dust, dirt, um, all that sorts of stuff's in here. So we haul, I don't want to mix good seed with this uh, in case, because I'm going to get docked more on this than I am on other loads. So if I haul just this load itself in, then they can't dock me on it compared to another load of good grain mixed in with it. at the elevator we just got the truck underneath the probe right now they're probing um, which is sticking a more or less a big vacuum cleaner into the grain box and that sucks a sample out and it takes it into the elevator so they don't have to come out here and test it and then they're able to see what quality of grain you have without coming out here there's a big hose comes from the probe to the inside of the elevator and then they test it inside the elevator and then they give you a green light and you get to go ahead and they tell you which side to go to, left or right, dump it, carry on. So you can see right there on that sign, there's a blue arrow, it says left driveway. So we'll follow this, follow this road around, and we'll get to the, there's a left and a right side driveway. We pull into the left for barley, dump it, get our slips, and back to load some more. So we did some things off camera here on this hitch. Uh, we got the front plate mounted on there. We got the hitch actually, the receiver tube welded in, the two and a half by two and a half receiver tube. Um, we got a few things we need to grind off on the sides. I left this front plate a little wide just because I wasn't sure how it was gonna end up. Um, so we're gonna use the zip disc here, just kind of smooth that side up. Um, and then we got about, I don't know, a few welds in here we gotta do yet. And then uh, this hitch will be done, we'll paint it black and then we'll hang it in the truck frame, um, clamp it in there, and then drill the holes through and bolt it in. So here you can see where that line is that goes down here, and then it also goes down the face. Um, I left this front piece of C-channel a little wide. Um, I did that so uh, I knew that I had a little extra left over because I wasn't quite sure how far apart those these two pieces of angle were supposed to be yet. Um, so we're just going to trim this off. It's tacked in place, but we're just going to trim this edge off here and then we will weld it out complete. Um, I'm going to weld a piece between here and here to fill this gap um, and then we'll pretty much be done. So you can see here, we got these two brackets that are gonna come down um, the top of the frame rail and the truck. It'll come down on a 45. Um, this will be flat with the back of the hoist. Um, we got a square tube welded inside. It was where it was cut out of the C channel. The square tube is actually slid through and then welded in place. We're gonna have to weld this seam here. You see me just cut that off. We're gonna weld this seam up. That'll be solid. We've already welded the tops. Uh, we got the actual two by two piece of square tubing. It's welded in all the way around on this piece of C channel. And then back side and front side of this piece of square tubing in between. This piece of C channel here is solely just for a nice flat face on it. As well as we have these... Um, 
D-rings and we're going to weld these on for the safety chains for whatever we're towing. Um, so we, and then I also welded a piece of thicker tubing around this piece of two by two. Um, and that just gives it extra rigidity. So if you got something bouncing up and down in this hitch, uh, you're not going to stretch the front out. Um, we got it sticking out a little fairways here. I'm not worried about that because it's welded all the way through that square tube as well as the C channel. There's lots of support for that. Your hitch will go in, hitch pin goes through, and you'll be able to use a whatever kind of hitch you want. A lot of people have a pintle hitch. Um, I thought it was maybe better if you had a hitch like this. You can pull grain augers around. You can pull your car hauler trailer if you wanted. You can pull any kind of other trailer as well as you can put the pintle hitch receiver in here. Um, they're good for 20,000 pounds. Um, so you'd be able to pull any implement you want home as well. If you wanted to pull a pup with this truck for a grain box, um, you probably would want an actual pintle style bolted onto a plate because um, those are good for quite a bit more tons than this is. So we got those sides cut off now and then I've uh, used the grinder and ground a groove in here up both sides. Um, that leaves a little bit of a land for your weld to go into so your weld pool is going to go in there and then it'll be flush with the surface and that beveled edge actually gives your weld more surface area to actually bond to. So we'll go ahead get this side welded. Uh, we'll flip it over, weld the other side, and then we'll stand it back up on the bench and get those hooks installed where I got them labeled out here. So we went ahead there and welded these sides all up. I used the stick welder and some 7018 rod, uh, typical farmer rod. I ground that groove in there, built a land for it so you got the extra surface area for that weld to bite into. Got those welded up. Then I tacked on the corners these uh, D-rings here. We're going to give those a little bit of preheat with the torch, get those uh, you know, just before glowing red hot, and then we'll go ahead and weld those on, and then that way they won't uh, break off or crack out as they're, they are steel, but it's, it's almost, it's kind of a weird metal. It's like a cast iron, but I don't know what they're made of. But I think I'm gonna give them a little bit of preheat first, and then we'll weld those on.
So there you go, we got the hitch all welded up now. We got the D-rings welded on both sides. Uh, we did two passes with weld on those, so I think those will be good and strong. We did some preheat on those as well. Um, we got this tube welded in, the two and a half inch tube, which uses a two inch receiver. Uh, that's all braced up front and back. Uh, we'll cut this piece of pipe out. This was just to hold it square while I was welding it so it didn't warp. We'll cut that out, lift it up inside the truck, and then drill the holes. Uh, probably get a mag drill and then use an annular cutter in that, um, which is a little better than using a cordless drill, that's for sure. So we'll let this hitch sit here tonight, let it cool off. Um, tomorrow we'll give it a coat of black paint, um, let that dry off for whatever the recommended time is on that can, probably 24 hours, and then we'll hoist it up inside the truck frame, um, clamp it in there, and then we'll drill the holes through, bolt it in place, and we should be good to go. Um, after that, we'll be able to move equipment around. If you're moving an auger from one bin to another, you don't have to move the truck home, park the truck, get a pickup, go back, get the auger, move to another bin. You'll just be able to hook that auger right to the back of the semi and move on to the next yard and empty out bins over there. So I think this will be a very handy feature. It took a little while here to get it going. We had other stuff on the go, um, but we're getting this project done and it's going to save a lot of time in the future. Morning everybody, another day here at Taylor Farms. We're just checking over this truck before we take off. Got a couple loads, we got to haul up to another elevator in a different town, we got some canola in the truck today. It's already preloaded from the last day I was hauling, I just loaded it up. Uh, we're gonna go dump that and then if their price is still good, um, then we'll go to the bin and I got probably 150 bushels worth of grain left in there that we'll haul up. Uh, so we'll check this truck over, make sure it's good to go, check oils, coolant level, all that, and then uh, we'll hit the road. So you see there we got that hitch finished up. It was all painted, all welded up. Uh, I got the truck backed up in front of the shop here. We're going to set it up on some stands and then get it in place and clamp it. And then we'll get the mag drill out and we'll drill through and put some bolts in there and hold that hitch in and it'll be done. Uh, and then we'll run that 7-pin wiring. It's underneath the truck because this used to have a fifth wheel plate on it and I just have to extend it to the back of the truck for some lights. So there we go, you guys watch me put this uh, hitch in here. 
Uh, it went in a little harder than I thought. Measurement wise, it is the perfect fit to fit in there, but it must have just went up a little bit crooked and kind of fought on the way up, so I had to push it in there with the jack. Kind of beat it back and forth a little, but it isn't stretching the frame side to side. It's actually a perfect fit. Um, so I got this in here now. It's lined up where I want it. I've got to take off. I've got to go do some other things, so we'll come back here later on. Um, I'll clamp it in position, um, and then we'll get the mag drill out. Mark where I want the holes. We've got three quarter inch bolts to go through. Uh, we'll mark those holes and then we'll get her bolted in. Good morning, everybody. Today we got the hitch. We got two bolts in there last night. I didn't record because I was doing it in the dark outside the shop here. Uh, the shop's not big enough to get the truck in. As you've seen, it's a shop with a dirt floor. It ain't much, but it's better than nothing. Um, so we've got the truck backed up to the front here. I'm going to get the mag drill out. We're going to drill four holes on the other side, get those bolts tightened up, and then finish the two on the other side. Uh, if you're wondering what a mag drill is, you're going to find out here pretty quick. I love them. They're a great tool, and uh, it's the only way to drill a hole well in something this thick. Um, you're going to get a nice straight hole every time. So as you just watched there, we drilled all those four holes in this with that mag drill. Uh, it's got an electromagnet on it, so you get the hole lined up where you want it with that center pin. Um, and then you electrify the magnet, which holds the drill to the metal frame. And then after that, you use it like any regular drill, turn it on and it spins and you drill the hole through. Um, but obviously you get a nice, really solid grab onto the side of the metal and it doesn't move and then your holes are nice and straight and you get your bolts exactly where you want them. Nothing moves, nothing wiggles. Um, it's the way to go. So we got two more holes to drill here on the other side. Uh, this is the side I mounted last night. I got two holes in there already. Um, so we're gonna set the camera back up, drill those holes, and then this project will be done. Um, I'm gonna go grab the torque wrench and we'll tighten those bolts to whatever spec it says it needs for uh, three quarter inch 10 bolts and then we'll go from there. Spring loaded button in there and this will pop it out when you pull it out. Just like that. And then that button falls out so that's cutting through the first piece of plate which is the truck frame extension and then now I'm going to drill through the hitch part that I made and weld it up. Put you guys back up there and drill the next hole. <laughs> 